Now that we have gone over DNA replication, DNA repair, transcription, and translation, we're going to cover a two-part lecture that uh, will put application of uh, all these principles to use in the healthcare system. And our lecture for today will be part one of pharmacogenomics. And the learning objectives for our lesson today is at the conclusion of this lecture, the student should be able to explain the drug discovery pipeline and how drugs are tested for efficacy and toxicity, the concept of genetics uh, and drugs. Uh, the student should be able to define pharmacogenomic and the logic behind its existence students should be able to explain what chemical individuality is as it relates to pharmacogenomics and then we're going to describe how each one of these phenomenon or chemical relates to pharmacogenomics PTC, primaquin, and limericks and the student should be able to explain pharmacogenomics and the influence that it has had on the practice of medicine and the influence that it's going to have on the practice of medicine. And then we're going to look at pharmacogenomics in light of how uh, drugs are metabolized and then relate that back to DNA and DNA repair and so forth. The problem that we face in this country, not only in this country but worldwide, is the fact that it takes 20 years and nearly two billion dollars to move a drug from the bench to the market. A drug after being marketed can actually be pooled based on the toxicity that it's going to show in the general population. Uh, this phenomenon has necessitated better ways of testing drugs. And so here's the drug pipeline. You begin by screening the efficacy of about 10,000 to 100,000 compounds in preclinical, such as tissue culture and animal models. Uh, you uh, narrow that down from 10,000 to 250 compounds. And then you get it into the clinical trials and then you narrow it down from 10,000 to 5 compounds. And then by the time that you get FDA approval for that drug, it has uh, uh, narrowed down to one compound out of 10,000. And again, that takes about 15 years, uh, 20 years perhaps. Drug testing occurs this way. You take a population of people and you treat them with the drugs and you look at the efficacy of that drug and toxicity. And if you look at it, there are there's a group uh, there's a population or subpopulation of that that where the drug is toxic and it has absolutely no benefits. There is a group of individuals that have actually no reaction to that drug. It's not toxic and it's not beneficial. And then there's another group where the drug is toxic but it's beneficial. And then there's another group where you have a uh, drug is not toxic but it's beneficial. So you want to eliminate drugs that will cause this toxicity and no effect, but you would want to get it down to where the drug is not toxic but it's beneficial. But really the best sometimes that you can hope for is that the benefits outweighs the uh, toxicity right here in this group. What is the reason for this variability?